what is up guys it's been a long time um i'm sure everybody's still feeling it it's still uh still hard out here for the uh the car enthusiast stuff still be too damn expensive and money ain't going as far as it used to so uh today's video is a little bit different than what i would normally do but i'm just doing some maintenance today um, but I thought I would record just because I haven't posted in a while and, you know, for the OGs to just like watching what we got going on over here, thought I'd throw it up. So today we're messing with the Subaru. Um, I've been having a little problem lately. Ever since I did the spark plugs a while back, um, dude, that would have been like probably March, April of this year. Um like the week after I did the spark plugs uh, about halfway to work had had a hard misfire like one hole was dead just misfiring and on a four-cylinder if y'all know you can really freaking tell um, so I get to work and my cylinder one I show a cylinder one misfire cylinder one's cool pack completely like just fell off like it wasn't bolted into the hole anymore or nothing so I was like, okay, well, at least that's something easy. So I put it back on, screwed it on, did it at work. It's good to go. Um, and it's been fine for a while. Well, here lately, um, I've noticed, like, if I do a little pull, like, in second or third, like, a low speed, high, high load pull, it'll kind of, like, cut up. And it's, I can't tell if it's a misfire or like something else, but my freaking Innovate Wideband, which if y'all have ever heard me bitch about the Innovate Wideband sucking ass, um, it hasn't worked in like two years. I've went through two sensors, and if y'all don't have widebands, the sensors are $75 a piece. Um, so I spent 150 bucks on two sensors, calibrated them, everything. They work for like a week, and then they're gone. Well, this is a common innovate problem they say that um you need to get their proprietary fucking heat sink that's like another 70 it's like 60 or 70 bucks that puts the the o2 doesn't screw in down here it puts like a spacer in it to where it screws in like up here so i still haven't done that because like i said i'm already butthurt at the money i've already spent for no fix but anyways i can't see my air to fuel ratio so I don't know if it's fuel or spark or what. Um, but finally last night I did a little pull and I was data logging just so I could kind of get to the bottom of it because it's been bothering me. And um, it actually threw a check engine light for cylinder one misfire again. So I go and pull the data log and like an idiot, I didn't have the misfire tables turned on in the data log. So it wasn't recording cylinder one, two, three, four, and uh, misfire or uh, spark advance or any of that I didn't have any of that showing so I don't know for sure but I had a check engine light code pulled for a cylinder one misfire so um, if y'all aren't familiar with Subaru cylinder one is this hole right here uh, closest to the front passenger side which conveniently is the easiest one to get to. Um, you might say, well, you dipshit, you got a cold air intake in the way, but trust me, that's the easiest one to get to. On the driver's side, you gotta take the battery out, you gotta take the air pump cover off just to get to the cool packs, and then you're you know, right there on the frame rail. You still gotta deal with the frame rail on this side, but you got a little bit more room, the engine's a little bit farther over, and we're going like right down there is cylinder three. Cylinder one's up here pretty much right under this. So I'm gonna go get some tools. I'm gonna do it out here. It's a nice crispy 43 degrees, 44 degrees right now, but it's been like 20 overnight. So taking advantage of the heat today and getting it over with. I'm gonna do it out here in the sun so I can not be freezing. But anyways, we're gonna get the tools. I just gotta get like a little screwdriver, pop these tabs up, get this off, get my Allen out, get this off, and get my airbox pulled out of the way. And that'll clear us up enough room to get down there to that cylinder one hole. And what I'm gonna do is pull the coil pack out. I'm gonna see when I'm pulling it out if the bolt's loose or not. Uh, I'm gonna pull it out, pull the spark plug out, and see what the spark plug's looking like. Maybe. Maybe we got a poop spark plug, who knows, but let's figure it out. 
All right, so we got our intake box out. Got our filter and all that extra shit out the way. And now, let me get the camera down in here. We gotta remove this little bracket to get this kind of pulled out the way. And then our number one cool pack is right here. So we'll pull that bolt that holds it in out. Uh, right now, it seems like it's tight. So, mm, but we're gonna get this bracket out of the way, get the cool pack out, get the spark plug pulled, and see what we got. Okay, so the coil was super tight. Had to, you know, the bolt had that nice little snap to it when I took that off. So, no, that wasn't a problem. But judging by all this soot, corrosion blowing back up the hole, I'm gonna say. And judging by how this crush washer is not completely flat. I might not have had the spark plug in there far enough. Sounds about white for me. Um, it's so scary doing these spark plugs. I'm going to show when I slide this one back in. I'm going to show like how intimidating it is. But like you have to do this really funky setup with like swivels and... It's tough doing these spark plugs. If you guys deal with spark plugs a lot, you know exactly what the problem was. Any guesses? Um, well, and also this uh, crush washer not being flat should also be a little giveaway. It probably wasn't tightened all the way down. Um, the coil pack was tight, kind of had a click to it when I loosened that bolt. So we know the coil pack was in there tight. Connector's good on the coil pack. And if it wasn't, I would probably have a more consistent misfire. Um, usually when the coil pack's not happy, like you have a pretty constant misfire. Um, so I kind of had a feeling it was something to do with the spark plug. How like if you just if you're just cruising, there's not much of an issue at all. Like it never breaks up at all. Like getting on the highway, cruising at 80 on the highway, like no problems at all. It's when you kind of dog on it more than like 50% throttle, getting into boost like in second and third gear, it'll kind of cut up if you give it a lot of load. And that when i did it last night that's when i was thinking you know it kind of feels like i'm blowing the spark out or i don't have enough in the hole and i'm like i bet that plug's not tight and judging by these threads it was for sure not doing too great so i'm gonna get that fixed i'm gonna get a little wire brush action on it get it get the threads cleaned off and uh it looks like it's burning good so and plus, you know, this is kind of a hard hole to judge because the damn plug wasn't in there right. So uh, I'm going to clean this plug up just a little bit, throw it back in the hole, and we'll go for a drive and see what we got. Uh Old -oh, moose. Freaking wild ass dog. And I got some other visitors too. Old mama and baby P came out to see us. Say, what's up, P? What's up, big boy? Look at this big old boy. Seven months, huh? Seven months going on three years. Still ain't talking much, but we're teething really hard now. Uh, we've got one just fixing to come out right up front. Um, but he's doing great. He's healthy, as you can see. He's a nice, chunky little boy. He's starting to try to babble a little bit we got lucky we got a pretty pretty normal healthy baby he don't get sick too much he don't cough he don't have any breathing problems he's doing great so there's a little pee update but anyways we got the uh, plug cleaned up hit the threads with some scotch bright and uh, you can tell by how burnt this is up here this uh this wasn't tight for a long time. Um, so we're going to get that in there and make sure it's nice and tight. And then uh, go for a drive and I'm pretty sure our problem will be gone. So let's do it. 
Alright, so I'm gonna try to get the camera in here so y'all can see this. This turd burglary that has to go on here. So Go straight to it. Oh my goodness, that's cool. Getting it threaded in. I generally do this part by hand just because I'm a paranoid freak. Uh, so I get it all as tight as I can get it with my hands and then finish her out with the socket. And I've been thinking this whole time, like, dude, this is seriously the easiest hole out of all of them. Like, this is the largest gap out of all of them. Like, you can see the frame tapers back to the, or, the other coil pack. It's even closer. And then the driver's side's even worse than this. So, like, this is literally the easiest plug to tighten down. This is the easiest coil to tighten down. And this is the one I've had all the problems with this oil chain or this uh last spark plug change that's i don't know it's weird to me like <laughs> that's how stuff goes though guys like you'll like the easiest one and you just easiest one to get to the easiest one to fit your hand to the easiest one to get the socket on and that's the one you screw off the most <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to get that tightened up, get everything put back together, all the airbox pieces and all that, make sure everything's tight and tip top, and go for a run. Alright, got it all buttoned up. Check the oil. You know, the Subarus just dissolve oil. fix my mount for my access port it's always when it's like hot and then cold and then hot and then cold it always fucks it up there we go let's get our access port plugged in it's hard to do with one hand sorry folks Christmas tree. Well, that's a pretty good sign. We're not instantly misfiring, so we know we at least put it back together right. Um, yeah, check the oil. The oil was good. Everything went back together like it was supposed to. When I was doing the spark plug, I, uh, I ran it in by hand and then I gave it like a couple pulls and it felt kind of tight and I was like you know what hold on so I loosened it back off with the ratchet and it was like super easy and I was like ah not tight enough so tighten it back up felt it it got kind of harder and harder and then I felt it like hit the hit the wall where it bottomed out and I was like I for sure didn't have this shit screwed in all the way so um, this thing yeah there it goes it pegged out it'll do wild shit like I assure you I'm not at fucking yeah <clears throat> I assure you I'm not at 11 or 12 yeah there you go it'll error out here in a second It'll do this, or it'll just peg out to 22 and then show E8, or it just won't work at all, or... I'm so tired of this thing. Like, by far, please, if you're going to buy air-to-fuel ratio gauges, get a fucking AEM. Do not buy Innovate shit. Just don't. Because everybody I know that has an Innovate air-to-fuel ratio gauge go through sensors like a motherfucker unless they have that extended uh, heat sink 
and you shouldn't have to buy a $75 heat sink for your $300 fucking air to fuel ratio gauge that you've already got two sensors in. You shouldn't have to do all that shit. Like, it would make more sense if it came with the heat sink and they just charged you $70 more for the whole kit. Then it would make sense. Because if the shit won't work without it, you should probably sell it with the kit. Like, bro, if y'all are OGs to the channel, you know how much I've struggled with manufacturers and their bunk ass subpar kits. And man, like, I just don't get it. Just don't get it. But I'm gonna let this old thing warm up a little bit more. It says 46 on the dash, but it feels it like I can feel it got like way colder in the past like 30 minutes. So we'll let her warm up a little bit and then we're gonna go do a little pull here and there and see if we didn't fix a problem. All right, so we're getting warmed up. See, see what we got, a little second gear pull. say woo and y'all was probably looking i didn't even look at how fast i was going i probably went a whole 75 miles an hour but like that's that's what's so sick about the subaru like it's whack and cool at the same time it feels like you're going freaking fast like it'll have you sucked in the seat and everything <laughs> you're just going a whole ass 80 miles an hour like but nope that for sure it would have broke up right there uh and it did not we went through all of second and third, and it did fine. Uh, made 16.81 pounds of boost, and my target is 17 plus or minus a pound. So we're right there where we need to be. Didn't get any knock, didn't get any dynamic advance, nothing. So we're good to go. So note to self, boys, make sure your freaking spark plugs are screwed in all the way because it can make a big difference. And it for sure feels like that thing has been not doing what it's supposed to do for a while or leaking back through the threads or something because it feels like I picked up a whole fucking 30, like, it, like, it's a noticeable difference. Like, it feels like another 20, 30 horsepower. So... She's been, and I've been thinking it felt kind of sluggish here lately. That was it. Plus we're in the winter now, so we got that nice crispy air. It's gonna be great. But uh, anyways, hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Um, I would have done some time lapse, but I couldn't freaking find my tripod for some reason. I have no idea where it's at. But uh, yeah, just a little quick video, a little, little uh, maintenance on the old Subaru, a little quick fix. But uh, yeah, other than that, we're uh, we're still saving up. I got a little, I got a little wish list going, and I I got a little fund going where I'm trying to save up and get enough to where I can kind of buy all the bodywork supplies and all like the carbon fiber stuff at the same time. That way I can buy it all, have it here, and then just work on it as I get time. So just be patient with me. It's the week before Thanksgiving right now. Um, I'm thinking by Christmas, by New Year's, I should have everything, or at least most of everything here to where I can get started on the bodywork. And then we should hopefully, I'm really, really hoping to paint uh, once it starts getting hot next year. So like probably May, April, May, June, somewhere in there, I'm trying to paint then. So I gotta get all my bodywork knocked out, get everything ready to go, so hope for that other than that thanks for sticking around thanks for being subscribed there's a lot of new subscribers so welcome um i'm kind of broadening the channel i'm involved in the subaru anytime something's going on with the subaru you're gonna see that uh, i'm not just showing only stuff about the truck even though that's what most people are here for um anything you know we got going on with white beards dually um He's been stashing up, getting ready to get that motor fixed up, get his transmission rebuilt. So we got the dually coming up next year, hopefully. Um, 
and then I got to get going on P's little power wheel. I got a little G wagon I need to fix up for him before he gets ready to start riding around. So that way he's got a whip and all that. So we got projects coming, guys. Uh, and then also I'm stewing on. I think I may have an idea for the rabbit, um, but not sure on that one yet. Still really thinking on that one before I jump down that rabbit hole. Aha. But anyways, that's it for now. Thanks for being around. Peace out. Be human. And we'll freaking see you later.